I mean, good morning, YouTubers and friends and family. We're gonna try to make a little quick run this morning, a little solo trip. I'm at Roscoe's waiting. They got a bunch of people fishing. It's Friday. Amazing how many people are fishing in this heat, man. The water feels like bath water when I put the water in my well. So uh, we'll see what happens. <coughs> I'm doing a little solo trip. I didn't want to wake my Jay up this morning. He was sleeping too good and uh, I'm going to get out early hot so we're gonna see what happens uh i got some extra croaker just for chumming i like to throw if they're not biting i throw them out there get them going sometimes there's baiting area sometimes it's not sometimes the trout are just sitting there dorming waiting for the bait and you throw that chum out there and you start getting them excited and they start eating so it works live bait chumming work but it's costly 50 cents a piece Let's just talk quick about the positioning of the boat. The wind's blowing out the uh, north, northwest a little bit, mostly north. So I like to put the, the nose right in front of the wind, of course, and fish the back of the boat downwind. Tommy V always says, let the wind be your friend. So we're gonna throw straight in the back towards the reef. And uh, that's what helps you make to decide which side to try on, even though the tide is coming in, it's coming over the reef. So it might set up perfect, we'll see. Positioning the boat is very important for your casting, especially if you're throwing uh, free line bait because you don't have a lot of weight. Man, my second bite of the day, the first one stole me. He ought to be right at keeper side, legal side, right there. I'm gonna jump in. The water's kind of dirty this morning. Let's see if I can get this boogie in right here. It'll be right at 15 or 16. Wind blowing right in my face, pretty strong this morning. This one's a little feisty. Another one, took a little drag, a little big, right at 16. The last one was 16, so hey, I'll take it, no giants yet, but I'll take it. Second fish, I just missed one. Got some bait around me on the water, on the top of the water. Looking good here, babe. Looking good. I'm gonna have dinner for sure. I'll see that dirty water. All these fish are about the same size. It's fighting good, but all about the same size. About that is 16. Good eating size, but nothing huge yet. It's slow though. One here, one there. But I'll take it. Hey, glad to be out here. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, cookie cutter size, huh? Look at that. All about the same size. Eating size though. Flipping size. One-handed flipping size, right? I don't have my camera woman on the boat. <laughs> right at 16, every one of them. I thought it was a little one, but that's the biggest one I got today, I believe. About 17. The water's still dirty. Got them in the jaw. Y'all see that? They're not swallowing it today, which is a good thing. I don't have to clean the boat. Oh, that's a good one. Biggest one today. About 18. I'm catching this, he's on the jaw. So that tells me I'm feeding a bunch. Look at that hook flew out of his mouth. See that hook right there? Crazy, that ain't mine. Maybe it is. <laughs> he's trying to pretty finicky this morning. And they, uh, <clears throat> they, you see they're not swallowing and that tells you that it's not a good feeding day. Uh, if you look at the moon phase, there's no, no like nothing after six o'clock, there's no, no bite. But I proved the other day that that doesn't mean I can catch some fish. I got seven or eight. I got dinner. And uh, one night real nice one. But anyway, my point is, um, you know, when they finicky like that, you got to keep a fresh live croaker on. So you got to have enough croakers to do it to throw them all off when they get hit. I missed more today than I've missed all year. Probably four or five fish I missed. They hit it and then let it go and it's just not aggressive. So uh, you gotta have a fresh croaker. That best chance to get in a bite is that first time you put that croaker on that first or second cast. After that, the water's warm, warm, and I mean hot in the well. The fish are hot. Uh, it's just a different time than the spring. You know, spring is easy pickings right now. You gotta work for them. And that's what I'm doing. Finally got one of them big ones on there. Look, huh? Late bite, late overcast skies. I only got one about 20 inches on there, y'all. About time, huh? I don't care if one hand flip him, though. That's a hole. Big old trap. I gotta get in, I gotta get in, I'm gonna damn it. 
this one might just maybe right at 15. But this, I, you know, I caught two fish just to let y'all know. Uh, these finicky, so I'm cooking them through. I, I put a few up through the underbelly, like right by that dors dorsal fin. And uh, I caught two, two like that. So uh, don't always have to go through the head, you know. When they, when they finicky, they get more action through the under underbelly. But anyway, uh, might want to try that if it's slow, like I just did. I got one of them hogs on here. Another big one, look at that. Big old trout. 20 inches right there. I don't think I have to lose it. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, man. Look at that big old fish. Come on, man. He's a boat. Oh, he's bleeding all over. Look at that. Beautiful. Big old male, too. I've been hooking these. Uh, did I say dorsal fin? I didn't mean to say dorsal fin. I've been hooking these croakers to the boat. By the anus, that little fin. You don't want to go in the stomach, but uh, it's created a lot of action. Getting them almost every cast now through the head. I wasn't getting a bite, so we got to change it up sometimes. Oh man, probably got another keeper right here. Gonna put that blue up. What you got? You got a nice one? Yeah, about 20. 20 incher? Yeah, got a couple 20. Nice. We got to grind them out, but we're getting them right. Mama's getting them all. There you go. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm a net man. All right, you're going to be on my YouTube. <laughs> you see, pop the hook. You, took, you, you better check that. You better check that fray on that line. Nice. Mm -hmm. Another keeper. Late, late bite, man. Late bite. About 16 inches. Late bite working today. See, I can't get that fish up. Uh, it's kind of light colored, huh? Look how light. Long, skinny male. Making a beautiful box today. Just a little bit of patience. I made a little move from that reef and uh, got, got some fish here by this little pier. I got one of them big old hogs on here. Late night bite, late afternoon bite, late night. It's about 11.30. That's a big old hook over there. Look at that. That's four pound fish right there. 22 inches. Have to release that girl, I guess. Look at that big thing. Beautiful fish, huh? Wow. Boy, it got to be fast and furious on that last spot. I was at an old pier and uh, had a bunch of glass minnows. And they were tearing the glass spinners up. They were coming all the way out the water to trout. It was insane. A lot of them were 15 inches, 14 inches, but I did pull up a couple 20 inches and I, I released one that was 23. Got lucky on that one. So uh, there's a lot of trout out here right now, even hot like it is. It's 11.07 and, and I could have caught all the 15, 14, 15. I'm tired. I got right at the limit, so it's time to go out of Croker. I chum with them today, but man, there's no moon phase all day with a strong incoming tide and the fish were on fire late. Early, I had to struggle, struggle, but uh, just lately, man, it was on fire. So uh, that's what happened on the Mississippi coast. Woo, it's on fire, man. The best year I had. I've only been here a couple years, but the size and, and the amount of trout. Tell your friends to subscribe, check out Pelly B's channel, baby. We'll keep on catching them as long as the weather allows. Love these overcast days. See you next time.